Right, I just uh, is moving to police work. It's a kind of poem called um, Dream of Blue Paint. And years ago, there's a, there's a reading in Brighton with Roy Fisher and Gail Turnbull and my, myself. And he was in the meet, Friends Meeting House. And Roy Fisher says, you've now seen the way that three poets use a Quaker table. And sure enough, we'd all sat around the table. One had gone behind it, one had gone beside it, one had sat in the front. It's like, there's a lot of revelation of our characters. So. <laughs> I'm not sure about this one. Um, down steep wooden steps from a veranda of sorts in a country I've never known. The wood worn and bleached painted a pale blue, a tropical landscape maybe, or at least warmer than here. Central America or Australia or Turkey. No one comes down these steps or, or goes up to the sprawling house beyond. The hours pass. I'm not sure what will happen. It feels safe here, wrapped in the daydream's quilt, the seashell's passive armor. To walk back up into the shade and sit in the neat still air, sorry, the near still air, a dry heat and hint of a breeze to come. The book instructs limitation, an orange butterfly flutters by. Lost, someone says, far below. To float out of this dream on theatre wires, gauze winged and modestly spangled, fairy wand to dispel the troubles, no matter how deep the seams, will it work? Just relax. Wait. You will die, running dog. This is a um, poem for my grandmother called African Violets. Um, my grandmother, his name was Pansy Harwood, and uh, she was born in New Zealand in 1896 and died in 1989. So just, just one, two glosses I need to give on this poem. Um, she refers to her as being a liar, um, but she was a liar in the most wonderful way. Uh, she made lies far more interesting than the truth. Uh, for instance, she had a piece of furniture she might have bought in a jumble sale a month before, and suddenly that piece of furniture was transformed into a family heirloom and been this for generations. And it was far more interesting to make life. And uh, equally, she was the word happens to Travis, which is my first name. My name is Travis Lee Howard, but the only person who ever called me that off the age of 14 is my grandmother and that grandmother. So now you know. <laughs> <coughs> it's close to travel on this, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> African violets. <coughs> Flags stream from the tops of the silver pyramids. Purple flowers present themselves to the air, the world. Chopin fights his way through all the notes, the choices. All this, and yet that emptiness. A real heartbreaker. Tears in my eyes. What did I give you? At the last, a pot of flowers. Your favorite color, you said then died soon after, the day after. I left you there in the bare hospital room. Your eyes and voice so clear in the recognition, like so many years before. Oh, Travis. And you gave me everything I know. 
but reduce it to yet another poem to entertain. Pages of words creating old routines. I systematically smash all those pretty pictures. They won't do anymore. That was a bit unnecessary, son, you say? I know, but their weight does you no service. My blood is your blood. It's as ancient as that. Pride and starlet you had, and with a lovely generosity, I treasure. I find myself moving as you would, not the same, but similar, sharing your tastes and paths. The night jasmine bower, the strength of these memories, the comfort your home was. Yet it seems almost another world, building rabbit hutches on winter evenings in our living room, sawdust and wood shavings on a worn carpet, easily cleared, a house that was lived in, not exhibited. And all those other evenings, summer or winter, spent pickling onions or bottling fruit or wrapping boxes of apples for store or stringing onions to hang in the shed above the sack potatoes or mending our own shoes all the work cooking making fixing all done capably easily together but you now gone forever not sat on the couch, corner of the couch, after your morning bath with a cup of tea, reading the morning paper. That ritual finished. Though other stuff continues, and your blood continues to flow in me, no matter what I might say. The tense continually shifts, past and present blur. We both loved love turning unnatural, sorry, we both loved love and were our natural lives, easy with the truth, turning facts to meet the story. We both have a distaste for trade, all the contradictions happily ignored. We both, now wandering helpless around my room, the rich world about, the flags and the skies, the dreams. I talk to you again and again. I see you again and again. I sat there.